<laughs> Here we go. Welcome to this 11th time that I've done these videos. How to improvise. I got my hand camera over here. Oh, over here. Yesterday was my birthday and I woke up and I put on some fish and I danced with markers in my hands. Note the original artwork. That's what this video is about. Uh, getting weird is one of the key secrets to improvising, a way to get free. So this video, this is the 11th Facebook live stream that I did, and I was I had taken a five-hour flight the day before, and I, at that time I was committed to doing these every Tuesday, and I knew the day was going to be super full. My Mom had sold her house and was moving out, and I was going back to help her. Uh, and I'm driving into town, and I'm thinking, oh, man, when am I going to do my improv? Because I knew the next few days even would be really busy. Um, and I was driving through, I have to go through this kind of marshy area. Uh, they put a highway through this, they call it the cabin swamp. And I just thought, I'm just going to pull over and record a live stream from my phone. Here in, the, here in the marsh. So that's what I did. Uh, and before I even get into it, I just want to say that I was like, you know, tired and all this stuff. It was so energizing to do this. I, I have never watched it back. I didn't suspect even for a second that it was like of high musical quality, but it served to just like connect me to my sense of aliveness, which is why this video is about getting weird because being connected to the sense of aliveness. What else is there? That's it. Okay. Oh. Ooh. I hear you rushing by. Ooh. I hear you rushing by. So the, the one thing that I'm playing off there, I, uh, I find it, and a lot of people find it so much easier to improvise if you have something to respond to. It's like when people get together to jam and they don't know each other, it's like, you know, just, just start something up and then I'll jump in because it's easier to like jump in in response to someone. Um, so being by myself, there's just some wind and then, oh, I hear you rushing by the car Whoa, you know, with the energy of the car. So I'm trying to find things to respond to here. I rest here in these bulrushes. I hear bullfrogs faintly calling out, looking for love, looking for love. And then, whoa, whoa. Rushing by, rushing by. Breaking up the love song or adding to it. Are they adding to it? I don't know, I don't know. Oh, love. Okay, this, I'm glad to watch this back. This is, this is two years ago. What I'm wanting to speak to there is... Um, this idea that the natural sounds, the bulrushes, the wind, the, the bullfrogs calling out their, their songs of love, you know, looking for a mate. Um, and then, you know, the cars are breaking up that sound. Um, there's this incredible book called The Great Animal Orchestra by Bernie Krause. And um, he really got into soundscapes and recording natural environments, natural soundscapes, and um, it was a part of the, the uh, you know, bringing forward the research on how much animals, um, birds, frogs, all kinds of animals, depend on sound environments to 
find out where each other are, find out where the predators are, uh, find food, find mates, all this stuff. And then, you know, like a plane flies over and it disrupts the whole biophony for a little while. And then they have to find each other. And it's dangerous for them to, to lose their place in the sound environment. Um, so I would get uh, kind of resentful of that at times. Like, um, you know, fuck, fucking humans, uh, you know, fucking up the natural world as, as we do. Um, and here, what I'm appreciating is this tenderness of like, you know, we are also the natural world. We've, we come from nature, we are nature, and part of us is these creative beings who've created these machines that make a lot of noise and that kind of thing. Um, and so here I'm like, you know, as a music therapist, it's like any sound that's present that the client makes that's in the room is part of the soundscape and is part of what's being worked with. And here these cars are going by and to resist it would be futile. Um, so it's like, how are these musical? How are these informing what's happening here? That's what I'm opening to. Oh, love. 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 turned up the caress from the wind always blowing but I'm not always knowing that you touch me that you touch me oh that's beautiful I love that this experience of turning up what's actually happening turning up presence the power of now um, singing that oh love oh love and singing it as a way to invite myself into presence into really being responsive to the moment that's that's what i want to be doing all the time um i want to find out what's happening in this moment more and more and it's infinite like it can be turned up and turned up and turned up my experience of the the moment to like orgasmic heights uh, the sensations in my body, you know, feeling the aliveness course through me, especially out here in the bulrushes, but anywhere. Be with your love, oh, oh. the energy that these cars are bringing what what are they contributing to the, the biology what are they offering you know, if there's somebody in a jam and that's the sound they're making what is that what's the gift of that what are they calling up in me so that i can meet them meet their energy feeling here oh and it feels like oh, it feels like a battle to the peace i rest i rest and then i hold up thou but 
just a warrior. I stay strong. I stay a warrior. I stay strong. The impression that I was getting was turning and, and like showing the cars. There was this this tenderness, like this guy is out there being really vulnerable, really open to the moment, and then these sounds are coming that are hard to integrate, like it's hard to feel tender love from them, which I'm feeling from all the nature around me. It's what I'm orienting towards. Um, and uh, I mean, that's a common experience for me in my life. Um, even I, I led this bereavement workshop last weekend in North Vancouver and we were so, when we were doing our checkout at the end, it was like, oh, so open, so tender. Um, and then I was like, gosh, do we need to do something to sort of like um, protect ourselves before we head out into the world? And people kind of laughed and it was like, we all are really good at protecting ourselves. Like we just walk out when it's like our suits of armor come on and we head out into the, the traffic and the city and that kind of thing. Um, and here, like this guy, it's me two years ago, hard to relate even, it was, feels like so long ago, um, is talking about being a warrior, like keeping that tenderness, keeping the, the openness, uh, the tender warrior, that's what I'm imagining. Wrong here on the side of the road, bridging the speed with the bulrushes <laughs> and the bullfrog song. Yeah. Bring a, being a bridge by keeping that tenderness not like okay I'm just gonna go in the car way and just and it's enlivening drive over the to be frogs. there at this threshold at this threshold. place where we're feels them both. it's enlivening to stay connected to my life where the world's me and here I am, and it's getting musical theater <laughs> on the side of the highway. And that's what it means to be alive. Oh, oh, that's what it is to be Alive. Uh, that's a neat insight. And all around me, all beneath me, poison ivy, <laughs> creating a barrier. And here I am, standing in the barrier, singing my song on Facebook Live. Peace, 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 peace. Hmm. Wow. It's interesting. Uh, none of my improvs have had a bunch of words before. And when I'm like getting into the process and then this guy's just revealing what the process is. Um, one, one thing that, that strikes me here is that, um, like the wisdom that to me feels kind of leading edge as I'm watching this, um, this guy is just saying it already. And that's the case, you know, if I go back and read my journals from my 20s, the, the threads of wisdom that are uniquely mine, like that I'm on this earth to unfold, they've always been mine. Like I've always known them. And I've heard other people talk about that too. Like, oh, I'm amazed to see how much wisdom I had. And even from working with teenagers and things like that, there's a lot of wisdom. And then it's like integrating that, making it more and more uh, a part of who I am and what I do, which is why I do these videos, um, because that 
it's in like these these videos help me harvest my unique wisdom and offer it. Um, let me see if there's anything else to say about uh, this situation. So singing about bridging worlds, the natural world, the man-made world, um, and how kind of incongruent they seem at times. One seems safe and tender and it opens me up. One seems harsh and, um, you know, requires me to, to toughen up and close down a little bit. And I know those are flipped for some people. I was talking to a guy from Mexico City who experienced it exactly the opposite way for him going out into nature felt like he had to toughen up and harden up and being in a city was like, ah, oh, that's where I can let my guard down and I feel, you know, <laughs> like I just get what's happening and that kind of thing. Um, so there's no value judgment in that. It's like, that's my experience of it. And actually, I guess at this time there was a value judgment. And to be fair, yeah, I do carry a little bit of a value judgment. The saying the poison ivy is creating this this protective boundary, like, okay, humans, you're over there doing your thing, and then there's nature over here doing its thing, and I'm going to make like a line of poison between the two of you so that you guys keep on your side of the fence sort of thing. Um, or if you come here, you come with sensitivity. You come acknowledging that, oh, being attentive, just being alert to what's happening. And it's enlivening to be bare at this threshold, at this place where worlds meet. It's enlivening to stay connected to my life where the worlds meet. It's enlivening to be bare, to be connected in this place where the worlds meet. This Worlds where one is comfortable, one feels natural, and one feels unnatural. And it's like I gave that example of the, the guy I met from Mexico City, but even for me sometimes, if I get really into, like, you know, uh, socializing, driving around in cars, um, watching movies, uh, you know, having things come to me conveniently, that sort of thing, um, to go out into nature um, or even just be quiet in my own house, um, that transition, like back into stillness, not external stimulation, um, there can be an edge there. And this guy talking about the aliveness of that, of that edge. Um, bringing stillness into activity, bringing activity into stillness, like whatever that, that leading edge is, um, is where there can be a lot of aliveness. So part of why I'm getting back to my videos now, I hadn't done one since last summer, um, is that I've been doing a lot of uh, reflection, tons of reflection, like uh, inner work, and am feeling like the next step in my inner work is to go to that threshold where the inner starts to move into outer, things that I'm sharing, creating, putting out into the world. Um, that's where my aliveness is coming, and it's my desire, you know, like noticing what my mind is going about that kind of lets me know uh, what's next, like where to do that. It was really nice to have a period of very inward focus um, and also seasonally. It's the first day of summer today, uh, so it's time to bloom. All right. Thank you. See you next time.